And welcome back. Tom Hartman here with you. And uh, in the studio with me right now is Suzanne York. Suzanne is the director of Transition Earth. Transition-Earth.org is the website. Uh, nonprofit based out of uh, Berkeley. Yes. Do I have that right? Yeah. Uh, California. And uh, previously a senior writer and program director with the Institute for Population Studies in Berkeley. And uh, Suzanne, let's, let's talk about the, the relationship between climate, Population and some of the the, the human variables here. Um, uh, let's start with, for example, human rights. How does how does population the the growth of population? Let me rephrase that. How does the growth of human population beyond sustainable limits? And I think that there's. In fact, let's start with that. Has the population of the Earth, has the population of the United States, grown beyond a sustainable? Boundary. Well, that's a good question, Tom, and thanks for having me on the show. Sure. Um, it's a tough topic. Um, it's easy to get caught up in the numbers, but the focus should always be on human rights. We're talking about people mm -hmm. that are here on the planet, and we want to respect the rights of people that are here, especially their reproductive rights, but also keep it within the context of the planet that we we live in. And protecting the environment is also critically important. So, at Transition Earth, we look for a balance between human rights and the environment, environmental rights in particular, mm. to get to the more you know, proverbial sustainable planet, um, but always putting human rights at the forefront. But with regard to population, are we beyond sustainable mm. right now? It seems to be that way. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're but, at 7.7 .7 billion people and then we're... Yeah, it's, it's yeah. really mind-boggling when you think about it. You know, all of human history and the first billion people was in 1800. The second billion people was in 1930. You know, when Franklin Roosevelt was sworn into office, there were only two billion people. And when John mm -hmm. Kennedy was sworn into office, that was the year 1960 that we hit three billion people. It's like we're, we're hitting this exponential curve. You know, we're, we're adding a billion people every dozen or so years. And it's just, it's, um, well, unsustainable is a word that gets thrown around a lot. So. How directly does this, this explosion of humanity affect human rights, women's rights specifically? Well, there's a lot of inequity in the world and there's a lot of um, you know, weak women's rights and we have a history of you know, patriarchy and colonialization and globalization that have like, suppressed people's rights. Mm -hmm. So by focusing more on women's rights and meeting their needs for reproductive health, maternal health, child health, we can you know, better empower communities to, to, to meet their needs. And you know, the, the focus should always be on women and providing ex education and access to healthcare, making sure they understand it, and also dealing with um, women that have no say in how they live their lives when they, you know, they're under the, the throes of their husband or, or family or a different patriarchal system. Um, we want to be sure that they understand what options are available to them, what might work for them, and it's always focused on voluntary reproductive health care. Yeah. It's, it's seen, you know, there's, there's a lot of theories about this, but one of the f ones that I find fascinating is that patriarchy um, really took hold with not the advent of agriculture, specifically, as Dan Quinn suggested, but before that with the advent of pastoralism. Uh, when we started herding animals, then the human race started viewing female animals as machines that could produce more food, essentially, and then started viewing women as machines that could produce more humans, uh, specifically for things like armies, uh, you know, and, and, and whatnot. And pastoralism, the rise of pastoralism 20, 30,000 years ago in the Middle East seems to be um, tied to this, this kind of violence. And, now, if there's anything to that, it makes you wonder, you know, what, what would it take for us to go, to, 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 to go back to prior to that, you know, in the mindset of saying, well, no, we're all just humans here, you know, that, that there should be equality. And it seems to me that the number one thing that would set that up, and we see this in the, in the availability of women's rights or the power of women's movements around the world, most in wealthy nations, is when there's not not fighting over resources. Right. Does that make sense? Am I, is there anything there? Well, if I'm following you correctly, I mean, it's, there's always this inequitable access to resource around the world, and so mm -hmm. that should be the prime, and one of the prime factors is making sure that there's a level playing field. And women tend to be better managers of 
you know, things like household goods or when they have money coming in, they spend it on the family versus men that may spend it on alcohol or other, you know, gambling or other things. So the, I guess, you know, when you talk about pastoralism, you know, we're just kind of looking at people, you know, as you know, functions of like, let's just produce more. Right. More so we can, you know, right. ultimately, so there's more people to buy goods. So right. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm thinking of, you know, is, is there a particular mindset that needs to be broken? Absolutely. You know, I'm, I'm looking at this yeah. whole abortion debate, and I, yesterday I read Clarence Thomas's uh, concurring opinion, and he went off on this rant about birth control. Mm -hmm. How birth control was essentially a, you know, a, a device of eugenics, and I, I view this as, you know, what Clarence Thomas is talking about as an attempt to control women. That's, you're spot on, yeah. It's always been about controlling women. And we see that now, unfortunately, in the U.S., how we're you know, stepping backwards on reproductive rights and it's, decisions are being made by men, older men, normally older white men, and women don't have any say. And so the, they're the ones that are being hit the hardest.